First thing you do is model your data. So think about the application you're trying to build and look at what users do in your application. So with SoundCloud, it was playing sounds, liking sounds, following users. If it's a movies app, you might rate a movie, you might want to see a movie. If it's cook, if it's recipes, then you might cook a recipe. So that's the example we're going to use. Uh, actions and objects, verbs and nouns. And the way you model your data is in your application settings, and we'll go through that in a second. Second step is to design your timeline aggregations. And this is how your application appears on people's timelines. And you can make some really cool aggregations. For example, Spotify is not just about the songs I listen to. They're able to aggregate my favorite artists and uh, my favorite playlists and my favorite albums. So that's designing your timeline aggregations. The third thing you do is mark up and expose your objects on the web. When you're building for the open graph, the objects are actually represented by URLs. And in those URLs, in the HTML that's returned, you add markup, open graph markup, which tells Facebook what these objects are. And then the last step is to publish actions and do that from every platform. And publishing actions, you'll notice, is an API level call. There's no iframes here. There's no Facebook mandated UI. This is an API level interface. So let's go and do it. So here we are in a basic application that I built previously. It's a standard Facebook application, has an app ID, has a name, a title, and a namespace. And the namespace is going to become uh, important later on. So we just go to the Open Graph tab. And because we've done nothing so far, Facebook's going to lead us through the process of setting up our actions and objects. So what we're going to do is build uh, an application all about food. And so in this, we're going to say people can cook recipes. So that's all we have to do, one action and one object. Cook a recipe. So let's hit Get Started. And Facebook's going to lead us through a process to set up our actions, objects, and aggregations. So here's the first step, edit our action types. So we can see the title up here, cook. And then we can see uh, all these optional properties, which right now we'll just ignore and pass on through. And we'll come back to these a little bit later. Then we can do some configuration about how this uh, action will appear in Facebook and do some configuration about the tense, past tense or present tense. Again, we'll leave all the defaults for now. And then down at the bottom here, we can configure the type of attachment, how this uh, story appears in Newsfeed. And again, we're just going to leave it as the defaults item for now. So we just hit cha Save Changes and Next. And that's the first part of step one. The other half of step one is editing our object types. So here we are with the name recipe. And again, just like um, we had with actions, there's a bunch of properties that come for free with, uh, with objects. But again, we're just going to ignore these for now and pass on through. We can see a quick preview of how this may appear in Newsfeed. So we're going to come back and configure these more a little bit later. But for now, we can just pass on through. And then the very last thing we do is create an aggregation. And again, we can just enter the simplest thing here, cook. And what we can configure here is how the type of aggregation. There's a bunch of different types. You can see down here, we can have a gallery type, which is good for visual things, tables, which is good for lots of data, and maps, which is awesome if we're doing anything based on location. But again, we're going to keep it really simple, keep it a list. And what this aggregation is going to show is all of the things I recently cooked. Really simple. So again, we're going to save and finish. And that is step one and two done. We have a single action type. We have a single object type. And we have a single aggregation. So now we move on to step three, which is markup and exposing our objects on the web. So here's one I made earlier. In fact, we've got three recipes that we're going to cook today. We've got lasagna. We've got pizza. And my personal favorite, Thai green curry. So you'll notice each of these is a particular URL. And all we have to do to make Facebook understand what these are is add a little bit of markup that explains what they are. So let's go back to pizza. We'll view the source. And this is the important stuff here. We've got some extra meta tags that tell us the title is pizza. There's a description, then in crispy. And then this is the important thing. The OG type is now Simon's Food App colon recipe. So what is that? Simon's Food App, well, if we go back into our application settings and look at our app namespace, 
that's where it comes from. Every single app ID has its own namespace, and we have to reference that in the markup. And the second half, Simon's Food App colon recipe, links to the fact that this is a recipe. We also have uh, an OG URL. Now, this is really important. Objects are represented by URLs. And when you have a different URL, you have a different object. So it's really important that when you're thinking about designing your app, you have a single URL for every single concept represented in your app. One canonical URL per object. So in this case, we're just going to say that this is the canonical object URL. And you'll notice it happens to match what's in the address bar. Facebook considers OG URL essentially as a redirect. So if you have other URLs that uh, include tracking parameters, say, as long as you, can t you add OG URL into the markup, then Facebook will follow that URL, and that is the URL where we'll scrape the metadata for, for the object. And then finally, we've got an OG image, uh, which makes the object look beautiful inside Facebook. So that's essentially it. That is an object instance. So we have recipes, which is the object type. And then we have instances, pizza, lasagna, tiger and curry. We, we can have as many instances as we want. So that's kind of it. But we want to make sure Facebook understands that and that we haven't made any mistakes. So for doing that, we have one of the most useful tools on our platform, which is the debugger tool. So for this, we go to developers.facebook.com slash tools slash debug. And into this, I can paste an open graph object instance URL. So we're just going to hit debug. And what's going to happen is Facebook is going to do an HTTP get on that URL and read the metadata contained in it. So here you can see we have the app ID, we have the URL type, Simon's Food App Code on Recipe, Pizza, ENGB, as the locale, and all of the correct metadata. Let's just do it for another one again. Thai green curry, different object instance, same object type. And again, we'll see there's no errors or warnings displayed. And uh, we can see the URL, the type, Thai green curry, the locale, the image, and the description. So these are all properties of the object. So let's quickly go back into our application configuration look at our object type recipe. And if I show optional properties, you'll see URL, title, image, description, and locale all match up with the metadata we had earlier. There's a bunch of others here, which, again, we'll come back to a little bit later. So we've done the first three steps. We've defined our actions and objects. We've built our first very simple timeline aggregation. Uh, and we've uh, marked up and exposed our objects on the web. So now for the fun part, we get to publish an action against those objects. So how do we do this? Well, if we go back to our uh, application settings, there's a hint here in get code. So if we click get code, Facebook's going to give us some samples of how you would publish an action. And so the first thing you'll notice is that we're going to publish it against graph.facebook.com slash me slash Simon's food app colon cook. And that is similar to how we defined our OG type for our object instances earlier. Simon's Food App is the application namespace, and Cook is the application name. So then we're going to say it's a recipe object that we're going to post, and then we post the URL that represents the object instance. So we're going to do this from the web, the mobile web, and an iOS example here as well. But the very first place to try this is in the Graph API Explorer, which is a simple tool at developers.facebook.com slash tools slash explorer. And the dropdown here, I've selected uh, Simon's Food App, which is the application that I'm working on. And so let's do this. The first thing we're going to do is select post. And then instead of me, we can actually use my uh, user ID. They're interchangeable. And then uh, what we're going to do is slash Simon's Food App colon cook. And then the field is going to be recipe. And in this example, we're going to click Thai Green Curry. So I'm going to take the URL that represents Thai Green Curry and pop that in the Graph Explorer. And uh, we're going to click Submit. And the first thing we're going to do is get an error. 
So it's telling us an access token is required to request this resource. And this is one of the important things about the Open Graph. Because it's an API, you need an authenticated user and you need a valid access token for that user. Otherwise, you can't publish to the Open Graph. So authentication, as we'll go on to talk about later, is like absolutely critical to the success of an Open Graph implementation. OK, so let's go ahead and uh, get an access token for this application by using the authentication dialog. Here we go. I'm gonna, there's my access token. I'm going to click Submit. And this time, I'm going to get an action ID back. Now, one of the important things about this is as part of that, I earlier granted a new permission called publish actions, publish underscore actions. If I don't have that permission, when I attempt to publish to the open graph, I'm going to get an error. So the second most important thing about building an open graph implementation is that not only do you need an authenticated user, you need an authenticated user with the publish actions permission. If the user doesn't have that permission, you need to pass them through the authentication flows again and request that permission from them. Once you have that permission, you can publish against the open graph like this. So we got an ID back, which tells us that the uh, publish of the action was successful. So let's go and see how this appears in Facebook. So the first place to check is the activity log, which is my private view of all of the stuff I've done on Facebook in chronological order. And you see the first thing here is Simon cooked Thai green curry on Simon's food app. Pro tip is if you click on the time in the activity log, then you'll get a preview of how that story appears in the tickers and news feeds of my friends. Simon cooked a recipe on Simon's food app, Thai green curry. If I click that, guess what? It's gonna take me to the URL that represents the object. We've added a bunch of parameters here that allows you to track where that referral came from, but the basic part of the URL is the base domain slash recipes slash Thai green curry, the URL of the object itself. So let's also see how this looks on the mobile web. Let's open Safari and go to the uh, mobile version of Facebook, the mobile web version of Facebook. So here's my timeline, and again, I scroll down, and in the recent activity section, just like in the native iOS app, Simon cooked Thai green curry on Simon's food app. Click that. It's going to open the canonical URL that represents that object in Safari. And here it is, able for me to play with. So that's it. We published an action against an object instance that we previously defined. And it's visible on ticker, timeline, and newsfeed on the web. And timeline and newsfeed on all of our native mobile apps both iOS and Android, and on uh, the mobile web version of Facebook.